All right, with the beading down to where I had turned and sanded, I started already turning down this next section and that's what I need to do is turn down this next section and get ready to bead that. Carefully checking my thickness as I go and making sure I'm maintaining the curve of the inside of the plate. It's a little high here yet, so I'm gonna have to take a little more down. Now that's pretty good right there. But what I really need to do is take a little bit more off here and have a little bit bigger section to work with. And then we bead this next section. Notice that I'm not completing the last bead, and that's because once I do this next section, I'm going to use that first groove there to spot for my next one, and I don't want to do that on a completed bead. Another thing we could be doing, and I suppose I will now for you, is we could be burning as we go. On the Back side, you notice I didn't do that at all. On the front side, maybe it's gonna make a difference. On the vibration, maybe not. I've done it both ways and... All right, with the beading down to where I had turned and sanded, I started already turning down this next section and that's what I need to do is turn down this next section and get ready to bead that. Now coming down here, I want to continue. I'm a little high again, so I need to remove some more. And I'm going to continue, but think about it. Down there, in the center, I have that recess in the back of the plate. So I never want to get so thin that I'm going to end up with a donut. Don't ask me how I know. Once I'm happy with the way that this feels, the contour, am I still on target? Then what I'm going to do is pull out my sandpaper again 150 220 sand it down and then we'll bead and that's the 220. the other thing is when you're sanding this next spot just in case you can't stay off that last bead that, that's another reason why it's not done yet. So now we bead some more. Now, unfortunately, I'm only this far in, but as you can see, the tailstock is already starting to get in my way and I'm gonna have to move, remove the tailstock. But before I do that, I'm gonna take off a little bit more of this inside so that I don't have to worry about it. Now I can either finish up my beads 
or I can take this off first and do the rest. And I think what I'm going to do is take this off first. You'll definitely want to be careful here. Remember the recess is right behind here. You're going to have to check this more than one time to make sure that your contour and your center, I'm a little high right here in the center still, and I have a, just a little lip right there. Now I've done this a few times, and I have a pretty good idea, but if you're in doubt, you don't want a donut. So carefully check your thickness. Now that feels reasonably good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow down my lathe and I'm gonna go back to my sandpaper. 150 and 220 and I'm just gonna go ahead and finish out the inside here while I can. And to decide, am I happy with the way that this plate is going to contour into the center? And I am quite happy with it. So we will finish up the beading. We move right down close to the center. Now think about your design while you're doing this because here's the time where you need to decide how close you want to get to the center with those beads. You can go all the way down and make the very center dot the same 1 8 inch that the rest of these beads are. I stop where I feel like it. It depends on what I'm thinking at the time. If I have a specific pattern or design in mind. But the closer in you get, the tougher it gets to bead and to burn. An important question is what to do with this center because it has a sharp edge on it where you left off with the beading tool none of the rest of your beads are like that can you leave it sure will it look okay it will will anyone anyone notice you will in this case I'm going to choose to pull out detail gouge it's actually the bowl gouge spindle gouge with the Cindy Drozda grind on it and I'm just going to touch that just enough to round it over. And there you go. Back to burning we go. Now with things so close and so sh small I'm going to use the sharpest point I have to get this center bead burnt. If you wondered, is it going to vibrate? Now you know. One more time before I start the lines. I don't know, maybe you can see. It looks like there's a little burn here in this area, a little burn here. And I'm again gonna take my four out steel wool and clean this up. It's maybe not perfect and you can see just a touch right here in these areas here, but as you'll notice, it goes all the way out like that. From here, we're back to drawing lines. I know how much you've enjoyed this last time, but this time we want to make sure our lines are close. Things are not going to be perfect because of my homemade jig is not perfect, but I want to get close. So lucky as I am,
Lucky as I am, we're on the spot here. Now your lines, when you get to the center, they're gonna get real close and they're gonna start overlapping each other and there's no way you can burn 120 lines around that very inside bead. So I'm gonna show you how we deal with that when we go inside and we get to the wood burner. But for now, I got a whole bunch of lines to draw. So I'll talk to you soon. Down to just the last few lines. I wanted to mention that there's a whole lot more lead on there on that plate now than what I'm actually going to end up burning. Especially down towards the center. It won't be so bad on the outside, but down towards the center. So I wanted to let you know, make sure you know how to deal with that or how I deal with that. A rag and a little acetone after I finish the burning and I wipe it down the whole plate. The acetone takes the lead off. And that's the last of the lines. This plate is done for my shop for being here in the lathe and next step is to go inside and sit down with the wood burner and burn these lines.